Am I in focus? Hi there, my name is Rupert Rickson. I'm a filmmaker and I run a video production company called Perspective Pictures. I've been making films for about seven years and in that time I've worked on documentaries about longboarding across America and hitchhiking the length of India as well as kind of ads and, and corporate videos and events and all that stuff. Um, and now, as Perspective Pictures, we've been going as a company about 18 months. When we started making films, I started with the Lumix FZ100, which is like a little DSLR. Uh, and, and over time, we've kind of slowly worked our way up, going to the 5D Mark II and the GH4, and now we're shooting with predominantly the, the Sony A7S Mark II, which we love. But now we are kind of in that top band of DSLR. And, and as a company, we're feeling increasing pressure to upgrade to, to something a little bit more substantial. To us, big, these bigger cameras are a whole nother world, which actually seems in a lot of ways quite daunting. I was speaking to Chris at Wex about this kind of issue of like, we're on the Sony a7S Mark II, what camera do we go to next? Chris has agreed to lend us an FS5 for a week on the condition that we make a video showing how we find it over the week and how it compares slotting it into our kind of general workflow. In the bag we've got an FS5, but that is really not very heavy. Canon 24 to 105 millimeter lens, a few extra batteries, a Metabones speed booster. Oh. We've got some really interesting shoots on. Um, but I think hopefully we're really going to put this camera to its paces. Here we go. Excited. So it's day one of testing out the FS5. We are heading down to Sussex, um, where we're filming a promo video for an outdoor centre. Um, so I'm really excited to, to get on set with the FS5. I've done seen quite a few tutorials online and I've messed about with it quite a lot. So I feel quite com confident in, in using the camera. Um, and yeah, I'm just kind of excited to see how it performs compared to the, the A7S Mark II, which is what we're obviously filming this on now. So we had a bit of an issue on the way over here where this came off a seat. Thankfully, we always have like a UV filter like on our lenses for that extra layer protection. And this is testament to that, where it's completely shattered the UV filter, but underneath the lens is fine. Yeah, I think we're okay. Just. One of the things that I'm intrigued about this camera is how quickly it's going to be in terms of taking it out of the, taking it literally out of the, the case and how quick it's going to be to turn on. Obviously, DSLRs, really quick. There we go. So I'd say it's a little bit slower than obviously than, than this lava, but actually in terms of switch on time and everything else, it's, it's about the same. These in internal NDs are so awesome. It's so much more concise and less fiddly than, than this variable ND we've got on the A7. And it means that I don't have to compromise in terms of the aperture that I'm, I'm shooting at or, or the ISO. So I can shoot a flatter picture profile, closer to the native ISO, and with a, with a lower aperture if I want, which is, which is awesome. I think the other thing I'd say about this camera is that shooting with the eyepiece is so much more convenient than filming on the A7's eyepiece. And it's so much more, when you've got a microphone on the, on the A7, you can't get that close to the camera, but with this, you can, you can because the microphone's set much further forward. So we've done some filming in this archery range, we've got some full motion shots, and now we want to get some slow-mo of arrows hitting those targets. So the FS5 does frame rates up to 800 frames per second. Um, and from 100 frames per second, you have to use the trigger mode. So it means that once you've got the shot and the action's happened, you press the button, and the eight seconds before you press the button becomes your slow motion shot. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start at 100 frames per second and work our way up, because the image kind of gradually gets a bit worse. Uh, and we're going to see like kind of what level we would say that the kind of the, the, the frame rate is usable for like a commercial client like this. So yeah, so I'm going to set the shot, these guys are going to fire some arrows and then I'm going to run out and press the trigger. Let's just kind of see how it looks, shall we? By eye, the 100 frames per second looks pretty crisp, I don't know for sure. 
and that's we're just waiting for the arrow so as you can see from the image here 100 frames per second is pretty crisp and i'd be very confident using it for commercial shoot and now we're going to step it up 200 see how it looks still 200 frames per second holding up really well here really liking how it looks it's now formatting and recording that and turning it into the video so a little bit longer now since it's twice the twice the length so we've done 200 frames per second and I'm now going to change it up to 400. It's a little bit grainy, but I think as long as you've got plenty of light and set up a nice shot, you probably get away with it. You can see it's a little bit less of quality, but yeah, now we are literally waiting for ages for it to, to buffer. It's taking quite a considerably amount of time. So if you're in a bit of a rush, it's a bit of a pain, you have to do this. But first things I no I've noticed already is that when you go up to 800 frames per second, it crops in on the sensor. So you can see here the sense has been cropped, it's really quite grainy, but to be honest it's still kind of quite a fun novelty to have, but I don't think it'd be something we'd be using massively. So one thing I'd say is the FS5 definitely has a more professional look to it. Turning up to a shoot with a client with just a simple DSLR can sometimes be uh, a bit underwhelming for your client. Keep, keep us steady, there you go. Big grill. Really. Big grill and shake. Yeah, hold it there for a second. <laughs> <laughs> so we've arrived on set. Um, this company is Igloo. Um, and we are filming a kind of classic kind of quick promo video. I'm excited we managed to fit, fit the FS5 in a very small camera bag. Um, and then literally it's like seconds just to put it together. Yep. It actually takes the same SD cards that we use for the A7S, which is massively handy. So, in light of our question about how well the FS5 uh, fits into our kind of normal workflow, um, I'm now going to attempt to mount it on the Ronin M uh, with a relatively small lens, but we do have the Metabones on there as well. And basically, I'm just going to strip everything off the camera and see if it will fit on there. I, I'm not expecting it to fit comfortably, but if it's possible. Oh, no. So I'm trying to make some little tweaks, see if I can get it working. Does it? It'll do it. So we've, uh, we've just done some shots on the gimbal. All, all looked kind of quite good. It did start to kind of tip. The moment we've got a full-size battery in it and we've got this lens and we've got an adapter, so I'd probably, you'd probably get away with it much better if you had a prime lens or a pancake lens and then one of the smaller batteries, you'd probably be all right. The motor had to work really hard, so it died a couple of times and the heat on the sides here. But if you're going for these bigger cameras and you're using this kit every day, then I would probably suggest investing in a bigger Ronin. Or if the budget allows, it's higher one. But um, yeah, in short, it works. Not to the standard, perhaps, you'd, you'd like it to. So the Igloo's a shared immersive 360 cinema. Uh, the projection's all around you. So our shared environments allow you to naturally discuss and gesture in the environment, and we support a large, ever-growing range of common tools uh, that allow you to view and analyse a huge amount of spatial data that's being generated all the time. Where are we going, Ollie? We are currently driving to Oxford. Today we're going to be filming a series of city bikes called Ofo bikes. The only difference being is that you can dock them and leave them anywhere, uh, as opposed to having to put them in a specific station. Are you excited? Hell yeah! So we've arrived at this very picturesque area of Oxford. Um, we are first of all going to go around Oxford and get some location shots. So we're actually going to film, get some time lapses on the GH4, and then the kind of wider, like, more kind of speed live action shots on the FS5 um, and we're going to go live, we're just going to go two tripods both the cameras and then we're going to come back to the car, drive over to East Oxford and then we'll be trying about. So we've been doing about uh, four hours of filming now with the FS5. Uh, the battery's lasting like really well. We've got like 
we're not even halfway through this battery yet, which is awesome. But equally, because it's a bigger camera, it's a bit heavier, it's a bit weightier, it's much easier to get like kind of handheld but stable kind of usable shot. And it has rained. I don't know if it's splash proof, but it seems to still work. So that's good. Enjoying it so far. So we didn't really get the chance to film a whole lot of behind the scenes on this day, but one of the things I'd say is we found it super useful being able to plug our XLR microphone straight into the camera. It meant that our setup time and everything else was so much quicker, and I think the client was definitely a bit more impressed by the camera. How's the shoot going? Fantastic. The S5 has lasted the entire day on literally a single battery, so impressive stuff. My role here on Starship. So we've had the FS5 for about a week now. We've taken it out to a good few commercial shoots and my kind of initial thoughts on it are that it's a fantastic camera. It was pretty easy to fit the FS5 in with our current workflow. Um, it doesn't run, it, it's a bit too slow. It doesn't quite run on any of our MacBook laptops. Um, it does run on our iMac, which we edit on as well. And it runs on this custom PC that we've built for editing beautifully. Um, the A7S has a full frame sensor and is really, really well in low light. Um, I think if we were going out to a shoot, we'd probably take both. Also with the FS5, the file sizes aren't massive. So I don't see it having a huge impact on our kind of storage solution and, and how we manage our data and all the rest of it. So hopefully that's, you know, if you're in a similar position to us, hopefully that's been of some help. And yeah, thank you for watching, I suppose.